The way it is set up is that this world is a projection, it really has no substance, it's like a mirage. Like if you were in the desert and you were walking along and thirsty and hot and you had a mirage of an oasis, it would be like wish fulfillment. That's what this world is. Just like nighttime dreams, we were talking about those yesterday, they're really no different than our daytime experiences, or our fantasies, or our daydreams. They're all, they're all dreams. And Freud didn't have a lot of things right, but one of the things Freud got right, we'll give him credit. <laughs> all right, Sigmund, we're going to we're throw you in here. You had a lot wrong, but we'll give you one thing. You said dreams are wish fulfillment. The experiences we experience during our daily life, during our nighttime dreams, nighttime nightmares, terrors, fantasies, even our juicy fantasies, all daydreams, they're all dreams. They're all the fabric of dreams. Sweet dreams are made of these. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? Travel the world in the seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. It's wish fulfillment. Everything that we experience, from your, your children, to your husband, to this Unity Church <laughs> in Arlington, to all the people in the church, to the trees, the planets, the stars, the cars I see driving by, the fishies in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. Everything we experience is dreams. And then you get this call inside that's like saying, come home, come home. This world is, that you seem to live in is not your home, come home. It's calling us to a state of mind. And it's just like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, where Dorothy has homesickness for Kansas. She really wants to be with all of her loved ones. She wants to go back. And it's, she wants to get, get out of this strange dream where there's a a witch with green face and a long nose and a wicked sounding voice and flying monkeys that come down and snatch you and take you up into the air to the witch and all kinds of things in this this land called Oz that she doesn't understand. Sounds a bit like Alice. Everything is distorted. Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Down the rabbit hole where everything's distorted. So when you become accustomed to the distorted world, when you become accustomed to those seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and months, when you become accustomed to those familiar faces of family, of children, of friends, of neighbors, whatever, when you become accustomed and you think that your feet are firmly planted on a solid base called Earth, through what we're told is gravity, holding us so we don't all go floating, floating off. When you become so accustomed to these things, when you expect them, when you wake up in the morning you don't wonder if you're going to float away, you expect you're going to step out of that bed and step onto some solid ground. This isn't like an LSD acid trip, you know, this is the stability of what we think is the world. You have to realize that, that if you believe that you're living in a reality called time and space on earth, that you are twice removed from reality. That you've first forgotten that you're dreaming, and you have forgotten also that you're the dreamer of the dream, and you take the world that's presented to you through the five senses as being reality and you act and react upon the sights and sounds and smells and tastes and touches that you have through those five senses. I remember when I was talking to Jesus, because I had a really good connection with Jesus, and I would, I would ask him things like, what about the five senses? You know, is there, is there anything that the five senses can show me that, that they have any relation, is there anything that are, have any semblance of likeness to eternity? And he said, no. These are images. These are, this is idolatry. You are, you are smack dead in the middle of idolatry. Remember from the Bible? 
hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. In Bible school, I was thinking, okay, I'm not going to make any totem poles. You, 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 you definitely won't see me making any golden totem poles uh, in my life. I was named after David in the Bible, King David in the Bible. So you're not going to see me making any golden totem poles, because that's the Old Testament and you know, the Ten Commandments and no graven images. Well, the whole cosmos, that's the graven images. Everything that we perceive through the five senses are the graven images. And the, and the, the teaching was, hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. So, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I do remember reading in the Beyond All Idols section of A Course in Miracles, where there's one sense that really got me. God knows not form. Hmm. Hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. God knows not form. Okay, I'm starting to get a little clearer idea here. From the Psalms of David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What a way to start a song. The Lord is my shepherd. Because we seem to be in the realm of wanting. We seem to be in the realm of desires. I call it distractionville. That's my synonym for the cosmos, distractionville. We seem to have so many wants. And then we have a beautiful blazing light like Jesus that comes along and says, Let thine eye be single. Hmm, single. That sounds a lot different from multiplicity. Single? He doesn't say, Let thine eye be multiple. <laughs> he says, Let thine eye be single. He's talking about unifying perception. We are being called to forgive. We're being called into wholeness. We're being called into completion. We're being called into agape, unconditional love. We're being called into being a living demonstration of the living God, whole and complete, holy, pure. We're being called into let that I be single, to let our desires become unified.